For the past couple of years, I've used Netlify and Vercel to deploy my applications almost exclusively and specifically recently using Vercel for Next.js projects. Now, I know that AWS is an option with AWS Amplify, but as big as AWS is, I've always been super intimidated to really invest into trying it out. But I got to test out AWS Amplify Gen 2, which just got released recently, and I was actually really impressed. I can see myself using this in the future, so let's see how to deploy a Next.js application in just a couple of minutes, and I'll talk through some of my favorite features that I was honestly shocked by and a couple of things to keep in mind if you consider going this route. Let's check it out. Now, this video is sponsored by AWS, so thank you to AWS for sponsoring my time to look into another hosting option like Amplify. All right, let's just do a quick intro to what Amplify is. I'm on the Amplify docs page. I'll have a link for this in the description if you wanna go through it as well. Make sure that you check the box at the top or toggle for Gen 2 to get the latest version, which is Gen 2. So when we build or we think about building full stack applications, there's a lot of different things that we'll need, a lot of different components that we'll have. We might have database, auth, file storage, we deploy this, we want it to live on a CDN for, so that the static assets are fast. We want to have server uh, endpoints where we can run things on the server in addition to static assets. There's a lot that goes into this. We'll actually see a little bit more in detail what all goes on behind the scenes. And this is all stuff that happens on Netlify and Vercel, but you are completely abstracted away and AWS gets you a little bit closer to an understanding of what all this stuff is. But I think Amplify does a good job of now abstracting that even more than it used to. So a couple of things that come out of this one is exactly what you'd expect when deploying a modern application, which is full stack Git deployments. We'll see this in a second. Basically you connect to a GitHub repo and that's it. It goes off and actually builds the thing, which is awesome. Now, a couple of things that are really cool with what AWS Amplify Gen 2 is doing is code first DX, specifically the fact that everything has TypeScript types. Now we'll see some of the features and things that are built in here, but the fact that you have TypeScript front to back all in one ecosystem is actually pretty powerful. And then lastly, this blew my mind. We'll talk about this a little bit more at the end of the video. One of the coolest features with Amplify Gen 2, which is faster local development to be able to run cloud sandboxes. So basically to automatically provision a sandbox that you can use when running in local development. Talk more about that later, but I think this is the number one feature that is super killer about this. So I have a little video about this. They talk about uh, real-time data, which is really cool. They talk about automatically generated CRUB forms, wired to data that's also really huge typescript full stack uh auth n authorization or excuse me authentication and auth z authorization so the cool thing about deploying with aws amplify is you're staying within an ecosystem that has all the different components of building an application that you'll need under one umbrella and i think that leads to some optimizations that you can take advantage of in code and infrastructure etc so let's take a look at actually deploying a Next.js application to Amplify so that you can see what that looks like in just a couple of minutes. And then we'll talk a little bit more in detail. So what I did to get started is just go through the quick start and to work with Next.js, you can choose your framework language above. You can work with a bunch of other frameworks. Obviously I chose Next.js on this and then there's a get started tab and we can see that there's an option to do this with the Next.js pages router and the app router. Now I've been doing all app router for the last several months, so I'm gonna choose that. But if that's not something you're familiar with, feel free to just stick with pages. Now from here, they kind of walk through your requirements and then you get into cloning a repository or creating a repository from a template. Now, again, this is probably gonna be the experience that you expect and love if you're like me, which is to just connect a GitHub repo to your hosting provider and have it go off and do its thing. So let's first go ahead and create a repository from this template. I'll give it a name. I actually have to name this number two because I've done this one time already. And then after we have that created, we can come back to the documentation page and click the deploy to AWS button, which will take us right to the Amplify dashboard and let us choose our GitHub repository to connect to. Now, if you haven't made this connection already, you'll need to give permissions to GitHub or inside of GitHub to AWS Amplify so that it has access to the actual repository. After you've done that, you can go ahead and choose that repository and then go to review to get to the next step and then to go ahead and actually deploy that. Now it actually has a pretty cool loading animation in here, which I think is a lot of fun, but I'll go ahead and fast forward through the rest of this. Now, after this finishes, you'll see your deployment and you actually have a reference to the domain, which you can open up the, app, the deployed application and actually see this fully deployed. Now the starter application here is a to-do app. It's pretty simple. You can go in and add one or two to do's just to make sure this is working. But the cool thing is this is actually working with a real database behind the scene that's been provisioned and automatically generated for you. So there's a lot that actually goes on when this deployment happens. 
Now, if you go back through the documentation, it walks you through viewing the deployed app, and then it says you can make some front end updates. And this is where we're actually gonna check out the code and bring it down locally. So you can come into your GitHub repo, you can uh, copy the clone link and then open up VS Code and do a git clone with that URL and actually bring that project down locally. Now there's an interesting next step to be able to set up your local environment. And that is to get a record of all the things that have been deployed for your backend for Amplify and be able to bring that into your locally running application. So the way you do this is inside of your deployment, there's a tab here for deploy backend services and you can download the Amplify outputs JSON configuration file. Basically what you'll do is take that file and throw it into the root directory of your application. And then from there you can go in and actually start your application. So if I run an NPM install and then go ahead and run an NPM run dev, I should be able to see this application running locally and notice that it's actually connected to the same data that we just saw in the deployed application. This is something we're actually gonna fix when we use sandboxes in a minute. So we'll talk about that then, but in this case, it's still connected to the exact same data. Now there's a couple of different code snippets that we can work with inside of here to implement delete functionality and then add some authentication. So I've copied in this delete to do snippet and pasted it into the application here. Now what's kind of cool about this is if I reference this client, which is all code that's been generated for us, and then go into models and then do dot, notice I get IntelliSense through TypeScript for the different tables that I have to work with. So in this case, I have a to-do table and then I do another dot and now I get IntelliSense via TypeScript for all the different uh, queries or mutations or whatever you wanna call it, functions I can reference for this given table. Now, what this actually uses behind the scenes is AWS AppSync, which is a generated GraphQL layer on top of the underlying database that AWS uses. Now, this is pretty cool because this provides uh, some things like real-time observability where we can observe a given query, notice this is already done for us, and then subscribe to data changes. So as data changes, you'll get real-time updates and you'll see that represented in this case inside of the application because anytime we get new data, we then update our state to include that new set of data. So this is pretty cool that you not only have database, you have a GraphQL query or GraphQL layer automatically generated for you. And then you have TypeScript SDKs, APIs that you can work with to be able to interact with your data. And if you wanna actually see the code behind the schemas that are generated, you can open the resource.ts file where you'll see we define the schema for to do. We have that have a property of content. And then we actually have some authorization rules that we can add as well. Now, right now this is just using public access, but if we wanted to nail this down by only accessing records that you or the user created themselves, we could add that inside here as well, which is pretty powerful. Now you'll notice this list step one where you could actually make some changes to this and add a new is done field to this as a Boolean. You can also come down to step two and they give you some examples for source code that you can add in your front end to be able to work with this actual model. Now the next thing they want you to do is implement a login UI. And honestly, this worked way quicker than I expected it to. So the first thing you'll wanna do is install the UI React components, and then you can add this in here. Now the big takeaway for me is that this authenticator wrapper or authenticator component that you wrap this with is automatically going to render the content inside of it if the user's logged in, or it's gonna show the log in screen. So if I were to go back to this application with the authenticator wrapper included, Notice that it shows me this login screen. Obviously, you'd probably want to go and customize this, but it gives you a login screen by default and then gates the content behind that. So you can customize this in any way that you want to, but to have a built-in auth thing just already there with a couple of lines of code is pretty neat. And then after I log in, you can tell that I'm taken back to my actual application. Now, if we go ahead and commit this code, we'll actually see that it's going to trigger a new build in Amplify so we get the latest version of our code. So let's just add a git message here of added auth, for example, and then we'll just do a git push to the source code. And if we go back into the browser, that's gonna automatically kick off what is now deployment three. So we'll give that a second to finish, and then we can actually see the final deployed version of our newly updated app. All right, that build has now finished, and you can see if we open the domain, we now have our gated homepage that includes authentication that we just worked on and pushed to our GitHub repo. So again, exactly like you would hope and expect, a simple push to a branch inside of our GitHub repository is gonna kick off the build and we'll have a fresh new version of our application deployed at a domain that we can access and test.
So I think that just kind of shows the integration of the services that AWS Amplify is putting all together for you. There's so many things that it does for you. I can't even really talk in depth about all those things, but just know it's taking care of a ton of stuff for you. And again, the benefit of this is staying in one ecosystem where you have this set of APIs and services through one hosting platform, which is pretty powerful. And I mentioned that the biggest feature of this that I'm pretty much blown away by is the idea of the cloud sandbox. So if you remember, after we deployed our application, we saved a few to-dos and then we ran our application locally and we saw the same to-do set up. Well, obviously when we're running locally, we probably don't wanna test or develop against production data. We actually wanna have a separate database. Now, usually what this means is we have to go and manually provision a database, maybe manually create another instance in our authentication platform of choice, whatever it is. We have to create instances of all those different services separate from our production instances. In this case, AWS Amplify has a way to generate automatically a sandbox for you that has all those services already configured and built, and then you can connect to that. Now, I think this is amazing because you have these isolated instances of all your data and you can easily provision these for different users if you have a team account, for example, or if you're just using it by yourself. Now, I will say when I went through this, the setup for this was a little bit tedious for setting up the local AWS credentials. And I think this is one of the things to consider with AWS is again, you're really bought into all the things that go on behind the scenes. So the idea of generating these AWS credentials and creating the separate profile, if AWS is not something you use on a semi-regular basis, that might be a little tricky and a little confusing for, for you because there's a lot that goes on. Now we'll say the documentation for this was really good. It was pretty straightforward. I basically just went through and copied all the snippets that it gave me and I was set up pretty quickly, but it is something to keep in mind. That said, after you have all that set up and then you're able to run your cloud sandbox, you've got a separate instance that you can develop and test against and you can generate as many of these as you want, which I think this is a killer killer feature because I've specifically struggled with this of onboarding recent developers to my deals for devs project. I've wanted it to be a more community involved project and I found it hard for other developers to get set up with database authentication, et cetera. In this case, this cloud sandbox would take care of all that stuff for you. So I never really thought I would say this, but I'm probably gonna look into using AWS Amplify Gen 2 for one of my next projects to really get a more in-depth feel for all the different services and how they work together. Again, the big, big benefit is having them all under one umbrella and because they're all under one umbrella, you know they're gonna work pretty well together. And I'll have a link in the description that you can click to learn more about AWS Amplify Gen 2. So I'm curious, what do you think about AWS's newest version of Amplify and its hosting and TypeScript SDKs, et cetera? Let me know in the comments below if it's something you wanna check out. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.